Marcus, um, the whole internet is, uh, is changing, the mobile world networks are changing, they're all becoming one really. Uh, in terms of the challenges we're seeing, I mean, we're, we're currently at a 4G point, moving to 5G. Uh, people think 5G is a kind of a, another network when it's probably more a collection of standards. Uh, but really it's all about resilience and, and one of the things I'm hearing a lot is that it's really for the next 20 or 30 years. What's, what's Alcatel Lucent's take on 5G? It's a very good question. I think 5G for us is starts with what are we trying to do? I think in the past we've actually invented mobile technologies starting from the technology up and saying, look, we had CDMA where we did sort of code division cleverness to, to get the multiplexing. Then we did OFDM type modulation for LTE. This time we're starting the exact opposite. What is it we're trying to do? We're, and I think our simplest statement is we're trying to enable the digitization and connection of everything and everyone. And if you think in that statement is, Machines are the everything, the people, obviously, are the everyone, and we're trying to do that in a way that makes them feel like they have infinite capacity. So we, we're connecting them so they have infinite capacity, at least apparently have that, which means each application, each machine, each person gets what they need. That's how we define 5G, and then you, from there the, the technology flows. So it's really interesting. What does that mean? Yeah, it means beam forming, a millimeter wave, uh, and using a seamless control plane as you said using all radios at once uh, LTE as well as uh, you know, new air interfaces bringing machines as part of that collective all of that follows from that larger scale statement and that's how we talk about 5G. Um, last week or two weeks ago uh, the FCC uh, made this big statement on net neutrality and when you talked there about infinite capacity the reality is we know there's no such thing really as infinite capacity the laws of physics come into it and ultimately the laws of economics because somebody has to pay for this. Uh, what's your take on, on on, on, the, on the whole net neutrality debate because you'd be, guys, you'd be the guys to be selling the equipment to the guys who build the networks. They're the guys who are trying to derive money from this. And, you know, while, we, while free and open internet sounds great, uh, economic supply. That's an excellent question, of course. Uh, we've been wrestling with this a bit ourselves. I think we clearly see the network as the next big thing. Uh, as you're connecting all these machines and people to applications that run in the cloud, you need a massively scalable dynamic network uh, to enable that so in that paradigm we fundamentally believe that value goes wherever the highest constraint is and the highest constraint is the network so in terms of net neutrality we actually think uh, the idea that we can't do paid prioritization is a bit of a limitation but on the other hand Specialized services are allowed, reasonable network management, which is important for optimization of the network, and sort of edge cloud hosting techniques where the cloud moves into the network is also allowed. So I think there's enough degrees of freedom there that allow everyone to get what they want, meaning uh, those who believe that you just have one way of delivering traffic get that. Those who actually want a specialized service or an optimized delivery get that from an edge cloud, you know, running very uh, efficiently deployed applications and services. And money will flow to that because it's essentially you're solving the biggest constraint problem. So back to economics, you solve a constraint problem, value should flow into that domain. And we've got mechanisms to allow that to happen by sort of this move to edge cloud hosting uh, that, that uh, not only is virtualizing the network to give it scalability, but actually is allowing you to host new services for other people. Um. Alcatel Lucent and Bell Labs have a great tradition here in Ireland. Um, you know, lots of R and D going on here, and you know, research that goes back decades and decades and lots of history. Uh, in terms of the the work you guys are doing here, could you tell me about the contribution the Irish operations are making to the to the overall future of what you're trying to do? Ireland is hugely important to us. Uh, it's been one of our most successful Bell Lab sites. In fact, of the new ones we've started, it's the one that's grown to the largest size and we intend to continue growing it. If you think about my vision of the future, which is this ultra small radio network backhauled by wireline to an edge cloud connected by IP and optics with an intelligent control plane doing analytics to optimize everything. Ireland does analytics, does the small cell architecture, works heavily on that, works on cloud technologies and works on, on bringing that all together in, in, in a whole that is an end-to-end -end value proposition. So Ireland, almost by definition, if you map it to our vision for the industry, is at the center of our vision for the industry and working on the key technologies for us. So very, very important. A lot of talent, a lot of creativity here and working on the right topics. The um, country is putting in uh, a lot of infrastructure, but plans to in the next couple of years, uh, fibre to every home or every village in the country. Um, the plan uh, requires about an investment of half a billion and uh, is going to make use of things like uh, overhead wines to, to carry the fibre. How familiar with that plan are, are you? And, and you know, in terms of um, 
the how how the, the plan will reach its objectives. What are, what are your feelings on that? Well, what I'm seeing is a very intelligent approach of doing fibre as deep as you can, uh, and then reuse the copper. Uh, wherever you can as well, because that's the right answer. We used to call it fibre to the most economical point, FTTE. Uh, but in fact, what it meant is greenfield do fibre. Brownfield, where you can reuse the copper, because we've invented these vectoring technologies that allow the copper to get much, much better, 10 times better. We use the copper because then I don't have to dig up rose bushes or drill holes through... Uh, you know, through the walls of houses. So use that and I can get fiber-like speeds over copper if I, if I go deep with the fiber, convert back to copper where I need to. I can do a gigabit per second on that copper. Or I go fiber all the way where I'm greenfield or I have easy access to the house. So I think it's a very intelligent plan that's being built in Ireland and, and it will be in aid of, the, of a new digi digital society. I think that's the, the very interesting part. This isn't just about broadband for homes. We go to that vision of the future where we're digitizing everything it's the enabler of the digital society and Ireland's going to lead the way, I think, uh, because of the plan they have in place. Marcus, thank you very much.